A few days ago we celebrated Rosh Chodesh, Rosh Chodesh Kislev. And Rosh Chodesh is always symbolizing a, new, a rejuvenation or a renewal of something. We finished the month, we passed with the previous month, now we're starting a new month. And who doesn't like new beginnings? Let's start up fresh. It's almost like having a debt on your credit card and the bank tells you, let's forget the debt, let's start fresh. And how many times is relationships, is an argument, let's forget about the argument, let's start fresh. This is a Rosh Chodesh, let's start from the beginning. And uh, every month has a certain type of energy that, that I need to work on. Something that this month can offer me that will help me and I need to work on. Now, we do know that based on the Book of Formation, Sefer Yetzirah, the letter that is associated with the month of Kislev is the letter Samech. There's always going to be two letters. One letter is associated with creation of the month, or the power, or the energy of the month, and the other letter will be associated with the planet of the month. But the letter that is uh, uh, associated and affecting the energy of the month of Kislev is the letter Samech. Now, Samech comes from uh, the term or the verse in Tehilim, from Tehilim Kuf Mem Dal, Kuf Mem Hei, 145, where it says, Somech Hashem Lechol Anuflim. Hashem is the, the leaning or the, how do you say this, the back seat of the car, eh, of the chair, the, what you lean on. How do you say it? In Hebrew it's called Mishenet. How? No, but every chair has the back. How do you call this part? The, the back of the chair? Okay, in Hebrew, it's Hebrew is called mishenet. Why? Because lishaen means to lean on. So when I'm leaning on something, it is called lishaen. So Hashem is the, the back that I lean on. So somech Hashem lechol noflim is, noflim is the ones who fall. Hashem is the one who's picking up the ones who fall. is raising them up. This is somech Hashem lechol noflim. This is the idea of samech. That the Kadosh Baruch Hu knows that sometimes you fall, but you know, when you know that you have who to fall on, it's uh, comforting. And you know it by yourself. It's very hard to fall and crash by yourself. Now, I think the right way of saying Somech will be to support. Because the translation of Somech Hashem Lechol Noflim, it means that Hashem supports all the ones who fall. Fall, fail. But nevertheless, why would, a, why would a person fall? What does it mean that I fall? I'm not talking about that I, I stumble on, on a stone on the floor and I fall. I'm talking about that I fall emotionally or spiritually. Why would I fail or fall? Is when I go after physical pleasures. When I go after something physical. If I direct myself only to the spiritual, I will never fall. There's a famous story, I believe it was either with the Baal Shem Tov or the Magid from Azrij, I don't remember exactly who. But a Hasidic story that there was a certain individual who lived in Russia and every day in the winter in the ice in the, in the snow would go to the mikveh every day, an hour one way, an hour back, needless to say going on the, on the snow and ice and the, the, the road, the, the path was to go up on a mountain and then go down the mountain. And sometime one person says to that person, how do you make it to the mikveh? How do you don't fall going down the mountain? And, so the person says, for anyone who's tied up or is connected above, doesn't fall down here. If you're connected to the world above, you'll never fall down in this world. And same and vice versa. If you're not connected to the world above, down here you will fall. So the reason why I will have a, a, a failing, or what we call in Hebrew a nefila, an emotional, a spiritual, Monday I'm here, everything is running well, happy, good spirit, good energy, things are going well, Something happens and, and I fall down. And again, I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about emotionally, mentally, spiritually and so forth. Why is that happening? Only because one thing is because I follow physical things. My physical pleasure, my physical desires, my physical de uh, uh, inclinations and so forth. Now, when I fall down, what happens when I fall down? And again, uh, I'm going to repeat this falling down all the time. I'm not talking about physically. Only mentally, emotionally, spiritually. When I fall down, then the other side of holiness, what we call sitra acha, gets hold you, catches you. Because I fall down to the depth, then the other side of holiness will get me. Then it starts feeding me, like injecting poison into me. Now, 
Going back to the creation of the world, I don't know if you remember, but months ago we had a Zohar class where we talked how when Hashem wanted to create the world, He, he had a lot of uh, advisors, so to say. So all the letters came to Hashem and told them, create the world with me. The letter Taf came and then they went backwards, like a stamp. We explained that in that class, that when you stamp something, when it's on the paper it's the right way, but the stamp is the, is the opposite, it's mirrored. So since we start with Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalit, Hey, so in the world above, the original is Taf, and it will go backwards. So Taf came, and then uh, uh, Shin, and then uh, Resh, and Kuf, and so forth. Nevertheless, when it got to the letter Samech, Samech said to Hashem, create the world with me. I want to be created with, with the letter Samech. What did Hashem tell, told her? What's going to be with all the ones who fall? Who's going to support them? I mean, there's going to be a lot of people falling. So, we under, want to understand this idea of this falling and where it's coming from. Now, the Kabbalah explains that we have different levels in our soul. The lowest of all is called Nefesh, and then Ruach, and then Neshama, and then Chaya, and then Yechida, and so forth. And there's different levels. We spoke about that many times in different classes. So there is a level called Dargat Neshama, the level of my Neshama. This is a very, very high level. I think, that's what I think, my understanding, my humble understanding, that we're all in the level of Nefesh. We don't go to such a high level. Mm -hmm. To reach to the level of Ruach, and then to reach to a level of Neshama, wow, we spoke about it in one of the classes of the Gates of Reincarnation. Mm -hmm. If you remember that the level of Neshama corresponds to the Sphira of Chochmah, to reach to such a level, you know where we see individual in our generation at that level. So I mentioned a couple great rabbis in our generation, such as the Rav Chaim Kanievsky, who's a great Chacham, Talmid Chacham, a sage, just that we understand his level, the, 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 the man goes through the entire Gemara every year. Most people don't go through a quarter of it through entire their life. He reads the entire Shas every year. He's a great Talmid Chacham. This is when you see an individual in the level of Neshama that reach to, to such a level that his, uh, his entire essence is Chochmah. So, we strive to reach to the level of Ruach or Neshama. But the level of Neshama that is called Madrigat Neshama is corresponding to the letter Samech. Samech, when a person reaches to the level of Samech, this is called Dargat Neshama. What does it really mean? This is called a, a seemingly completion, or what we call Gemara Tikkun, the, the completion of my rectification. Because when I come into this world, I come first time, then second time, then third time, and fourth time, and I can come here dozens of times in incarnations. But when I'm done, this is called Gemara Tikkun, I finished, I concluded my Tikkun, I'm done, I'm out. I'm, I'm done with this world. In order for me to reach to this full rectification, I have to reach to the level that is called Neshama. Because if you remember when we learned in Shara Gilgulim, in the gates of reincarnation, you first rectify level of Nefesh, then Ruach, then Neshama, and so forth. Now, in this month, a very powerful month, even though I know I say that on all the, all the months that are very powerful months, but this is a very powerful month, and you have to always look at which holidays in which month. If you remember last month, we said that there's no holidays in the month of, of Cheshvan. That's already making a, uh, a nifty month. Uh, there's not even one holiday. Bishrei, look how many holidays are in the month. Nisan and so forth. So in the month of Kislev, we have Hanukkah. Hanukkah is a very powerful uh, holiday. We know based on our sages that after Mashiach comes, all the holidays will be cancelled and the only holidays we're going to continue celebrating is Hanukkah and Purim. Because Hanukkah and Purim is a gilui lokut, is a godly revelation above nature. Hanukkah is a very unique holiday. It's so unique and so exalted that we are allowed to work on that holiday. Usually on holidays we're not allowed to work. We have to completely strike. Hanukkah you're allowed to work, you're allowed to do whatever you want. All you need to do is light the candles and eat donuts. And eating donuts, that's our invention. This is not uh, rabbinical, not biblical, not anything. But nevertheless, what is the idea of Hanukkah? Hanukkah is the victory of emunah. This is emunah is belief. This is something we don't, most of us barely, barely have. I mean, we want to have emunah, but we're ktane emunah. That's how our sages call us. Ktane emunah, very little emunah. Like I said many times in many different examples, that when things go well, then Hashem is the best God. And I have full belief in Hashem when things are going well. 
once I get into the first challenge, the emuna flies out of the window. So we have a problem with emuna, and this is the foundation of everything. It all starts with belief, with emuna. If I have strong emuna, I'm, I'm untouchable. Or how do you say, un, in, not invi invincible, right? Not invincible. How do you, uh, no, invincible is when you don't, when you don't see you, right? How do you, uh, no, that's invisible. Invincible is, a, I, I'm, I, nobody can touch me. I'm untouchable when I have emunah. Look at Moshe Rabbeinu. He was like the top of the top of emunah. Look what he was able to do. Avraham Avinu, the father of all belief. He was able to go through fire. When we have emuna, if you have high level of belief, you can walk through walls. We had sages in the past that they were able to do whatever they want. They were way above nature. They were able to go through a wall. Why? Because they believe the wall doesn't exist here. I'm way above the wall. Why, don't, why can't you go through a wall? Because you don't believe that you can walk through a wall. And you believe that this stone exists right now. The stone doesn't exist right now. You are way above that stone. But we have this much belief uh, in, in this world. Hanukkah is the victory of Emunah. And how exactly? Because we have a very low perception of belief. We have a very uh, low perception of the ability of our own belief. You know, when you're young, your mother tells you, you can do it. You can do it. My mother kept telling me, you can do anything you want. And I was like, really? Okay. And I believed my mom. So I went and I conquered the world because my mom told me, I can do it. You know, that's a good parent. Can you imagine my mom telling me you are a failure? You can't do anything in your life. Anything that you're going to do, you're going to fail. I mean, I know people that that's what their parents told them. And they became a, a loser. But when you have somebody behind you telling you, I believe in you. Then you, whoo, I, I, I can do it. So this is how important is sometimes just the, the right feedback. I'm not talking about, right, now, about necessarily a, a, a mother and a child. Any person. You know, they always say behind a successful man there's a, a supportive wife. Because the wife says, I believe in you. I believe in your abilities. So we have this much understanding in, in the power of, of our ability. Because we don't have belief. So Hanukkah is the symbol of victory. The way I can uh, be victorious and gain back emuna. Now... Emuna, if you want to define it, is a very, very, very broad topic to define it. But I want to tell you one thing that, that belongs to emuna is that you need to know how to develop love to somebody that fails and falls. And usually it's for my own self-gratification. So when do I lose my emunah in Hashem? Is when I fail to my own self-gratification. I decided not to eat a certain food for a certain amount of time, whatever, a diet. Then I fail, then I don't believe in myself anymore. Or I set myself a goal and I failed for my own self-gratification. And then I, I, I feel like I'm a loser. So the emunah is knowing to develop this love for the the idea that I fall for my own self-gratification. And if you take it to your own life, I just gave an example with the food. You take it to wherever you want in, in your life. Unfortunately, people in our generation are dealing with all sorts of... Uh, uh, I, I don't like saying uh, the word bad habits or addictions, but everybody's addicted to something. Some people are addicted to crack and to heroin and alcohol, and some people are addicted to their phone. And some people are addicted to whatever, a, a, a cookie. I'm, I'm, I'm not to step on anybody's toes, but we all have a, uh, we'll call it a weakness right now. Some people, it comes out in a very extreme way when it's addicted to a substance. And sometimes it's something very simple. Most people, they don't even aware of that. They're addicted to their phone. Take away their phone for 24 hours, you'll start seeing their, 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 their twitching. Where's my, where's my phone? So that's an addiction, I'm sorry to tell you. If you play on a video game four hours a day, <laughs> you know, this, this, this is a certain uh, type of an addiction. But when I don't have control over it, is that I also lose belief in myself. And it's very easy to lose, lose belief in myself. Now, going back to the Samech, the Somech, the support, we go through events in our life. 
And we're going to now talk about the negative events in our life. When we have a positive event in, in our life, it's a reinforcement and so forth. But we have negative events in our life. Loss of a loved one, loss of business, uh, breaking of a marriage and so forth. You can call it an event. We'll call it also a case. Because in Hebrew, the word is mikre. Mikre is a case. But I don't think it sounds so well in English, so we'll call it an event. Sometimes happens an event in my life and I don't know how to get over it. And again, it can be a loss of finance, can be a loss of a loved one, can be a, a, a breaking up of a marriage or whatever it is. You, you, you again, t take the information I'm taking, telling you, you develop it to your own personal life. But there's a, an event in, a, in my life and I don't know how to overpower it, overcome it. And that event will bring me down. And just for the sake of the example, now look, there was the, uh, the uh, everybody was running for mayor. Just imagine in the candidates that didn't get elected. The, the feeling of lost, the feeling of um, um, I, I wasn't good enough, nobody likes me enough. I'm just thinking of the candidates that are going home. Just giving a quick analysis of a situation. Yeah, it makes sense. You're looking at the polls, so-and-so got 40%, 40 votes, the other person got 20. And I remember not too long ago, we looked at the local newspaper, we saw the candidates, and one person got like barely nothing. And I heard people laughing like, hey, I only got 200 votes. And I was saying, if that person will hear it, what would they think? I'm a failure. Nobody likes me. Nobody believed me. Nobody believed in me. And that person puts his tail between his legs and goes home and starts crying. Imagine what that person, now this is an event, how do you get over that event? Now some people, they have a rough skin, I don't care, next time, I don't care, I'll do something else. But, how do you do, how do you go over a, a certain event in your life that affects you in a certain way? Now, all this, why am I saying that? Because we're celebrating the holiday of Hanukkah, the war was against the Greeks. Now, the Greek, I mean, we call them Greeks, but I have uh, two lectures online, you can go and find them, or you can take the Hanukkah CD, I think actually the CDs ran out of them, but anyways, where I explain the idea behind this idea of the Greeks. So, there is a, a way of thinking, or, or, or a path, how the, the Greeks are operating. The, Gree, the, the idea of Greece or oh, the Greeks, we'll call them Yevanim. I don't like saying the Greek, because it sounds like a Greek salad, but we'll say Yevani. The Yevani, the enemy that is called Yavan, this is a certain klipa. How is that affecting me? That the Yavan, the Yevani will tell you, the event is what matters. You lost, that's it, you are a loser. You succeeded, you are the winner. This is the idea of the thought, how the approach of the Yevani is, that the event is what counts. Now, Kislev, if you're looking at the word Kislev, you can break up the word to so many ways. Kislev sounds like Kise. Kise is a chair, and it ends with Lamed Vav. So Lamed Vav, what's Lamed Vav? It's 36. Yeah. Uh, different, many different uh, reasons. Lamed Vav is 36, the numerical value. We know Lamed, it's a very powerful number. One of them is that we know that every generation has 36 tzaddikim. Lamed Vav tzaddikim. The tzaddik is what creates emunah. The tzaddik, how is Moshe Rabbeinu called? Raya Mehemna. The, trust, the trustworthy shepherd. But rather the right way to translate it is the person that gives emunah. The tzaddik is the, why do we have a tzaddik in our, in our life? Is to give me, to build emunah. The tzaddik has un, uh, the utmost emunah. A real true tzaddik is un, unstoppable. Can do whatever he wants. Moshe Rabbeinu can be here, can be there, can do whatever he wants. And this is again, brings us again to this idea of the samech, because samech is a circle. And a circle is a completion, something that is complete. Not, there's no blemishes. It goes around in circles. It's not infinity that has two circles. Samecha, Igul, is the symbol of perfection and not only perfection, of completion. Now, to give you an example, what I'm trying to get to, if you sit now in a round table, everybody's equal. If we're sitting in a square table, a rectangle, then I'm at the head, and you're at the side, and you're at the end. But if it's a circle, it's a round table, we're all equal. And you know when we're all equal? When there's no geava, when there's no pride. The problem with us is that with the, our level of ge'ava is out of control. If you remember, we, w we went through once a mini course of tikkun midot, of the rectification of the midot, of the, 
the characteristics and I explained that we, uh, we have two sides to it, the negative midot and the positive midot. And on the positive side, the highest of all, the first midah of all is midah ta'anava, the midah of being humble. And then that will start birthing more midot, more characteristics, more attributes. On the other side, the worst of all is midah ta'geava, the being pride, having uh, too much pride. Now, where does everything originate from? From when my pride is being pushed. So if you remember, I explained at the time that the highest of all negative uh, characteristics or attributes is geava. Now if somebody will poke my geava, my pride, it will right away develop two midot, anger and sadness. That's where anger and sadness comes from, because somebody touched my ego. Geava is ego in other words. Now uh, from that midot, they will start birthing more midot. Resentment, hate, jealousy, and so forth. That's where all the bad midot are coming from. They're coming from geva. Now, when everybody's equal, then there's no geva. We're equal. We're all the same. Where do I come, where do I come up with pride, with geva? Is when I feel that I'm better than you. I'm smarter than you, more successful than you, I'm more attractive than you, whatever it is. That's where the geva comes from. But if I see that we're all equal, then there shouldn't be any geva whatsoever. This is this dargat neshama. In the level of neshama, a tzaddik, a complete tzaddik, has zero geva. He doesn't see you and him different in any way. Now, Kislev, what's powerful about Kislev, I know I said before every month is powerful. The power of Kislev is that it has the power of enlightenment. Other months have different energies. The energy of tshuva, the energy of healing. The energy of Kislev is enlightenment. Who doesn't want to be enlightened, to get enlightenment? Now, this is not stamen enlightenment. It's a enlightenment that comes from darkness. When you are in light, then light doesn't make a difference. But when you're in darkness, light makes a huge difference. This is called itron ha'or min ha'choshech, a very great uh, Kabbalistic term that there's uh, the greater advantage when light comes from darkness. If you take now a candle, and you go outside, broad daylight, will you see the light of the candle? You're not going to even notice it. It's going to even affect. Take that light of the candle, bring it into a dark basement. Now the, the little flame lit up the whole basement, the whole dark room. The victory of light over darkness. A little bit of light diminishes a lot of darkness. And this is the power of Kislev, is this enlightenment, but light that comes from dark, darkness. Now, what is this light and darkness? This is revealing the emunah in me that is coming from the, myth, the Greek methodology. That's that belief of, the, of what the Greek came and did to us. And this is up until now. There's a klipa. It's called klipat yavan. That is affecting us up until today. The desire for physicality. The desire for victory. The, all these desires. This is all coming from this klipa of yavan. And I don't want to go in length. You can go find those two lectures online where I really break it down, what is this klipa of Yavan? What is this war with Yavan? And I break it down in a very uh, thorough way that you see that we're still fighting the Greek up until today. The desire for fame and beauty and, and success and so forth. There's nothing wrong with having beauty and success, but it depends to which direction it's taking you. But nevertheless, the power of the month of Kislev is to enlighten the, the darkness, but it's really to reveal the emuna that is coming from a place where there's no emuna. Why? Because the idea of the Yevani, of the Greek, is to live the moment. Enjoy right now the moment. Doesn't matter what's going on tomorrow. Doesn't matter what's going to go be in a hundred years. Doesn't matter what's going to be in the world to come. That's what we talked about before with the Lashon Ara. You enjoy it now. You enjoy it now. What's going to happen in 120 years when you go up to Shemaim? They're going to show it to you. What do you think? It's just going to uh, uh, dissolve from the universe, what you said. So you enjoy right now the moment. Oh, let me hear that juicy thing. What you said about that person. Wow, oh, tastes so good. Don't you think that in 120 years, you're going to stand up in front of the heavenly court and they're going to tell you, you know, that on November 2nd, 2018, you had a very nice conversation with so-and-so. Do you remember? You'll be like, no, I don't, I don't remember. It was like 100 years ago. No problem. We had about 1,700 cameras on you from every direction. And they're going to play the playback to you. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember saying this. Uh, now, now, now what? Now what? <laughs> so, 
So the idea of the, the Yevani is enjoy now the moment. Enjoy now because tomorrow, I don't know what's going to be tomorrow. This is not a Jewish concept. Now, Emunah, the belief, is wherever there is a place of nefilah, when I fall, or when I, something that, is, that I don't really desire happens, it means that it has to be a rectification. Now, Kadosh Baruch Hu is always going to, so to say, manipulate situations that I will fall, or there will be a situation that I'm not really happy about. The business deal didn't work out, the relationship didn't work out, whatever, I'm not happy with this. This is for me a blinking red light to say something needs a tikkun, has to have a rectification here. That's where the emunah comes in. Because I will look at this case or the event and I completely disconnect it from what I need to do here. And if I have to go through something, it's because there has to be certain tikkun here, a certain type of rectification. Now, going again back to Hanukkah, I know I'm going through a lot of details, but I want to get to the end of the, to the class. Hanukkah, we celebrated because there was a miracle. What is the miracle? Ask any two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old, what was the miracle? What did it tell you? That the candle, the fire, the oil was burned for eight days, which we already talked about it last year. It was seven days, not eight days, because the first day is not a miracle. Right? Remember we talked about that? Right. If they had oil, the oil was supposed to light for one day. So the miracle is only seven days, not eight days. But we're not going to get technical right now. That's what people think is the miracle of Hanukkah. You know what's the, period, the miracle of Hanukkah? Not the, not the oil. It's the victory over the Greeks. Can you imagine a whole army and a few men are fighting them and they're winning them in such a way? That's the real miracle. Now, the reason why we celebrate, we also attribute the miracle to the oil, because the, the Kohen Gadol was the one who would stamp the oil. Now, Kohen Gadol is the Madrigat Neshama. This is, this is the level. Kohen Gadol represents the level of Neshama, which again is that Samech, going back to that Samech, a completion. Kohen Gadol is not some uh, candidate that they had some campaign and they chose the Kohen Gadol. The Kohen Gadol, if he makes one mistake in the Holy of Holies, the Kodak Kodoshim, he dies. There's no place for room for mistakes here. Kohen Gadol is called Neshama. This is a very high level. So, the real miracle here, if we want to break it down to simple language, the miracle is that we were able to control or to rule the Samech, to ex elevate ourselves to such a high level that we were able to overpower the, the Greeks. This is the victory here, is that we were able to, to, to rule the Samech, to reach to the level of Neshama, to conquer all my desires. When I'm able to conquer my desires, that's when I reach to a level of Neshama. That doesn't matter what you're going to put in front of me. It, does, it doesn't move me from, from where I am. It doesn't matter what situation you're going to put me in. It doesn't change my emunah. It doesn't put me down. It doesn't make me feel too much. If I have success, it doesn't make me proud. If I have failure, it doesn't make me feel like a loser. I'm constantly in one level. Now, the, the miracle here is that we were able to go above the whole method of the Greek. And that's to reveal the emunah. To bring the emunah up to the surface. Therefore, if you're looking at it, you know, the idea of the, what the Greek uh, uh, idea is, is that they're all about the body. The, Greece, the Greeks were all about the pleasuring the body, it's all about the body. And, for example, I mean, again, I have another class about the whole idea where I explained the three cities of Greek and where, which city brought what. If you remember, we said that the city Sparta brought the sport and each city brought something else, but nevertheless, Look at just at the idea of sports. There's nothing wrong with physical activity for my own health. But the idea of the sports of the Greeks is that it has to be a winner and it has to be a loser. And if I win, I'm the one who's cheering, I get the trophy, I'm, uh, everything is good, but somebody on the other side is sad, crying, and he was defeated. And this is a very uh, Greek way of looking at it. We won! I have the victory! Which again, there's nothing wrong with sports, don't get me wrong. It's very healthy to do sports. But when it becomes the challenge that I have to win you, then it means that I'm defeating you. Which means I'm putting you down. It means to make myself greater. And this is not a Jewish concept, to put somebody down to make me greater. 
The Jewish concept is that we're all winners. Let's win together. Let's elevate all of us together at the same time. Then we are winners. If I'm winning and you're losing, and the Jewish concept is that I'm not a winner, I'm the loser, because I'm looking at you as the loser. The Jewish concept is let's elevate ourselves together. together. If I'm not together, how can you call yourself a winner? You're not a winner. You are just a bully, putting somebody else down. So it's very easy to put somebody else down to make me look great. That's the problem in our generation. How can I make myself look great? As if I make you look bad. Now if you look great, I'm not going to look so great myself. So I have to put you down, one way or another. We know where that comes from? I don't have any belief. I don't believe in myself. I don't believe in my success. I don't believe in my abilities. That I have to make you look bad. So the, the victory over the Greeks is that I don't need this competitive idea between us. Who's better? I know more Torah than him. I'm more successful. No, you're not. Where do you think success is coming from? It's from Hashem. Hashem is the one who pr pr presses the buttons. If somebody is successful, because Hashem decided for him to be successful. And if somebody is not successful, it's because Hashem doesn't want him to be successful. Now, if you have a Muna, then you believe. That's what Hashem wants. You don't have a Muna, then you, are, you feel like a, I'm, a loser. I'm the loser here. I was defeated. So I have to go back and win over my title. Now, when you have this competitive fight, Everybody's losers. There's no such a thing that one is a, is a winner. Everybody is a, is a loser at the end of the day. Even the one who got the medal, you're still a loser because you defeated somebody else. The Jewish way of looking at it, the Torah way of looking at it, that the real victory is that we're all in peace, that we're all together. That's the real victory when both sides benefit. If one side benefits and the other side gets the short end of the stick, this is not a victory for anybody. And this is definitely what the Torah is about. The Torah says, when everybody benefits, then you are victorious, when there's peace. Now, the miracle that we're celebrating is that within this physical desire chaos, we found the place of belief. How do you think the Hashmonaim, the, the Maccabim, how do you think they won? You're talking about a few guys winning an army. You know why? They had belief. And if, we, if I believe, psh, I'm untouchable. I can do whatever I want. So the miracle here is that we went into the physical chaos. We are in a physical chaos. I have physical desires, physical inclinations. I have lusts. I have uh, things that I, I can't live without them, my addictions, whatever it is. And I'm going into the physical chaos and I'm bringing out emunah out of it. Now, that's why the place of emunah, what's called nekudat emunah, we all have this place where we're born with, it's called the nekudat emunah, the point of emunah. Like I told you many times, when the baby is born, he has 100% emunah. There's no problem with the baby. The mother gives the baby, he's three hours old, he gives the baby something to eat. You think the baby says, whoa, whoa, lady, what are you, what, whoa, is this OUD, is this badats, what are you giving me? <laughs> the thing, the baby questions the mother, the mother comes to take the baby from the hospital, you think the baby says, listen, lady, I don't know you. I want some references. I want to talk with a few other people that maybe know you. Let me ask my friends, do you know that woman? Is she a good mother? Maybe I can go to that one. That looks like a better mother to me. Babies have 100% emunah. Whatever you give them, they take. Then they, they meet their shocking reality when they get a little bit of dot, when they reach to the level of two, they get what's called a, some type of a comprehension. Then they start fa facing the harsh reality that suddenly the mom lies to the baby, the father lies to the baby, the sibling lies to the baby. Can you imagine how confusing it is for the baby? Then mommy said a lie? Wow, what's going on here? It's devastating. And then the baby grows, he's four years old, he goes to the kindergarten. The teacher, you know how we look up at the teachers? Remember how we looked up at the teacher? And wow, she's the best in the world. And then suddenly the teacher lies to the child or the child sees that she lied. What? My, my, my teacher, my hero is a liar? And then the kids lie, then the friends lie, and before you know it, the child is eight years old, they don't believe anybody, because everybody's liars. Everybody's lying all day long. So this is where we destroy the emunah in our kids. When my kid sees me lie, I destroyed any type of emunah of my kid. You know how many pa fathers call me, listen, you gotta talk to my son, in two weeks he has a bar mitzvah, he doesn't wanna put filling on. Tell them, you want me to fix now what you damaged in the last 13 years? 
How, do, how can I fix what you damaged? You lied all day long. Now your child sees a liar, so he doesn't believe. He says, my father's a liar. He wears a beard and puts fill in on, but then he lies. So what's going on here? Kids are not stupid. And kid, don't you think kids see what's going on? Kids see everything. So we have a nekuda, a point in us that, of belief. And you can't take it away, but you can bury it. And the victory over the Greeks were that we brought this nekuda, this point out. Now, when I'm able to overpower all these events that are happening in my life, that's a miracle. And that's only if I bring up this emuna to the surface. And this is the power of Kislev. The power of Kislev is strengthening my emuna. You have a problem with emuna? This is the month. Now, how do you really do it? I'll give you an example. If a person is hungry, if he's going to eat, he solves the problem? For now. For now. He's not solving the problem. You're right. If a person is hungry and he eats, he thinks he'll, it will be good, no? No. No. Because you know what? Because tomorrow you'll be hungry again. And the next day you'll be hungry again. Did you solve the problem? No. You know what will solve the problem? Believe that it will be okay. Believe that everything will be fine. You solve the problem. The, the eating is not a solution because tomorrow you'll be hungry again. Now I'm not telling you go on a hunger strike. I'm just trying to put a, a, a concept. Of course, there will be a lot of arguments. I'm saying, what, what, what kind of nonsense you're saying? Of course we have to eat. What if I uh, try to take, go to the depth of the idea of what I'm trying to say? Right now I have a problem. I'm hungry. I think the solution is to put something in my mouth. This is not the solution. It's just a band-aid. I'm not creating a solution here right now. And again, don't take my words out of context and say, what is he talking about? No, I'm not going to eat anymore. Take the, 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 the method, the idea, the parable, and now we'll apply it. When, we, when I live, did you notice something that happens every day that you live? Every day that I live more, you know what happens? I die more. Because I'm going towards the, the end. You're right? There's a timeline. Which means if I'm starting here, every day that I'm more alive, I'm more dead. Because I'm more closer to my death. I mean, it's not such a, a positive thing, a way of thinking. But I have to understand that at some point, the body dies. If I don't live, if I don't have that stuck in the back of my mind, something's wrong with me. At some point, the body will die. So today, I'm 44 years old. So it, let's say, chas v'shalom, I have to die when I'm 90. Right? So I'm... 46 days closer to my, eight years closer to my death today. How old are you? Um, I'm going to die in 44 years. Uh, but we don't know when we're going to die. I know it's a very extreme way of thinking of it. But the point is, is the emuna is to switch it around. It's to switch everything around. The, the real way of, th of uh, applying emuna is that I live more. Every day that I go through, I live actually more. I mean, yeah, I know I'm close to my death, but I'm, I actually live more. So why should I walk towards death? If I'm planning my life, people say, you know, when I retire, when I grow older, when I do this, why are you going towards death? This is a, a very uh, uh, not believing system way of system that you, I know there's nothing wrong with planning your, your old age, but you're saying, you're great. Well, you know, when I'm going to be older, when the kids are going to be out of the house, why are you going towards death? Why don't you go towards living? Why don't you go towards more uh, emuna? Now, again, going back to the Greeks, the Greeks, they want the moment. Let's enjoy what we can take right now. But this is a lie. This is falsehood. The real emet is to live forever. And the only way of living forever is when, the, yeah, the body one day will die. But I'm not, I'm not a body. I'm a soul. The body is a vehicle. My uh, way of looking is that I'm going to live for eternity. When you know that you're going to live for eternity, now start designing how is that eternity going to be. The problem with us is that we don't believe that we're going to live for eternity. We think that when I'm, when I'm going to be put in the ground, that's it, light is out. No, I'm going to live for eternity. So my entire way of thinking has to be with living to eternity. So Kislev, just to summarize it, is the power of emuna, Is where I... I dig into the depth of my soul to bring the emunah out. And the emunah is what's holding us. 
That's why I told you before, the Samech, Somech, Hashem Lechol Noflim, the support, the support, my support system is my emuna. And when I don't have emuna, all the negative things that happen in my life is because there's no emuna. Anger, depression, all this stuff is only because I don't have emuna. If I have emuna, I'll never get sad. I'll never get depressed. I'll never be disappointed. I'll never be anything. So, to summarize it, <clears throat> anything that's coming negative into my life, <clears throat> it's only because I don't have belief. If I have belief, what seems to be negative, it's not really negative. <clears throat> it's just one more step that I have to go through. Something negative happens in my life, it's a sign for me to do some type of a rectification. If I have unbelievable belief, tomorrow will be better. The next business deal will be more successful. The next relationship will work. I, Hashem, everything will work at the time that Hashem wants it to work. So the core of everything is emunah. If I have emunah, then I have no problem if somebody is more successful than me. Because that's what Hashem wants. I have no problem. That person got married before me. Good, that's his time to get married. That person is more popular, more rich, more smart. That's what Hashem wants. So when I have emunah, I'll never get jealous. I never get uh, upset. I never get disappointed. I, I, I don't see other people as a threat in any type of a way. I see everybody equal. We're all equal at the end of the day. If you don't see each other equal to each other, there's a very big deficiency in emunah. When I'm looking at other people, beard, not beard, a yamaka, Jew, not Jew, we're all one level. I don't look at people like, oh, you have a black suit, you here, and you have only a gray suit, you there. It's nonsense. This is totally nonsense. This is the physicality, the, the looking at the physical part and being impressed by that. You want to go above all that? Then there's the only way is nourishing the emunah. When I have a very high level of emunah, psh, nothing affects me in any type of way. I think Moshe had a depression. Moshe Rabbeinu, I think he was depressed uh, sometimes. Or he had uh, moments of weakness that he had to go to a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist said, don't worry, everybody loves you, you're Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe, <laughs> Moshe Rabbeinu, ben, everybody went against him. Uh, you would think that he will have some type of a problem. That, you know, when they, when the, with the argument with Korach, everybody voted for Korach. You would think that it would mess up with him. Yeah, I'm just giving an example of Moshe Rabbeinu. Look at all the prophets, all the great tzaddikim. Everybody went against them. Do you think they had an issue? They didn't look at this as an issue. So, to make a very long story short, the, the lack of belief is the source of all the problems. Because when I have a very high level of belief, I don't, I don't care, I don't get affected. It's not that I don't care. It doesn't affect me in a negative way. I'm happy when you are successful. I'm happy when you are victorious. I'm happy that things are working out good for you. If I don't have belief, why him and not me? Why he's on the top and I'm on the bottom? Why, you know, he, this person is not making me look good? You know, I talked about before, a lot of the Lashon Ara, where is it coming from? Because person A doesn't make person B look so good. So then person B is now, oh my God, that person is a threat. He doesn't make me look good in my community. So let me go and slander him. Let me make some all sorts of... Uh, 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 inf bad information about him, then he's going to look back, then I'm going to get back the trophy. That, that, this is Jose Emuna. This is the zero belief. So, the point to take from that is that the month of Kislev is the ability to overpower that. You go and you focus in your life what is your deficiency, where do you don't believe in things. One person will be in business, another person will be in relationships, another person will be with my own self-esteem. I'm not as great as I would want to be. I'm not as uh, uh, famous as I would want to be. Or people don't love me. All this nonsense, but nevertheless, every person, you have to look in yourself. Wh what is my gr Yavan that I'm fighting? What is my Greek here that I'm fighting, that I'm failing, because there's no emuna. And you pinpoint where you're failing, and you're saying, why did I fail here? Because I don't believe. And again, you have to take it to your own life and analyze it. And I can't analyze now every situation. But you take it to your own life and you analyze. You look, where did I fail? I fail right now that I, I'm jealous of that person. I fail right now that uh, this relationship didn't work out. I fail right now this business transaction didn't work out. Whatever it is. And you analyze it and you're saying, what, what was the failure? If there was a fail, I mean that I'm not believing enough. There's not enough emunah. If there was enough emunah, okay, that relationship is not for me. If there's enough emunah, the business deal will work another time. If they had a great level of emunah, okay, so that person is the better person to be the mayor. I should not be the mayor. Whatever it is. Now you take advantage of the month of Kislev is to pump up the emunah. How do you do it practically? 
is that you have to feed your body with energy, your soul, with ever, anything that has to do with emuna. There are many things that you feed your, your soul with emuna. One of them is in the word of Kislev. Kis velev, now even though we're writing it Lamed Vav, but you, it sounds like lev, like a heart. And kis is a pocket. You have to pay attention to your pocket. Saying in other words, this is the month to really increase in tzedakah. Because when you give a, a kiss is a pocket, where do you put your money in your pocket? You have to pay a ticket, putting your heart to something is you're paying attention. Now tzedakah is not necessarily writing checks, by the way. Tzedakah is that I give something out of myself to somebody else that doesn't have that. It can be money, it can be a place to sleep, it can be my attention, it can be my time, and it can be my place of you right now needs to shine. I'll move a little bit here. Now, it's your time. Your time to be shining right now. Everybody has to be in the limelight at some point. So the, the, the great way of doing it is, in Hebrew it sounds much better, lasim lev lakis, kis lev, sim lev lakis. Look where, where, you, where you're holding back. You know, and how, time, how many times you go in the street and a person goes like that, you know you have some coins in your pocket, and you're like, eh, no, I, I don't have anything. And I'm not judging anybody, sometimes you need the money. But the idea, it's not, not being judgmental if you're giving or not, the idea that you're holding back, you don't give something. How many times people ask for help and you're like, I don't want to help this person right now. Because the real stuck is when you don't want to do it. When you have a million dollars to give a hundred dollar donation, it's not a big deal. A big deal is when you don't want to give, it's not comfortable to you to give, but you still give. And again, don't, don't, don't be locked on just money. Sometimes it's my attention, it's my time. It's an hour of my time. It's, sometimes it's just giving, giving up or giving over. You, you'll take the, the, the stand right now. So this is one uh, very powerful way how to strengthen the emuna in me. There are different ways that I spoke about so many times. I said already that by saying Birkat Amazon every day, the, uh, when you say that you eat, you wash your, your, your hands for bread, and you eat bread and you say Birkat Amazon, this is a very high level of gaining emuna. Smelling good scents, and not the perfume of Christian Dior. Smelling uh, uh, herbs, besamim, strengthen the emunah. But we want to focus about Kislev, and like I told you, the way is, this is the month of opportunity, that yeah, also giving actual charity, the month of very auspicious time to give, to give charity. Why do you think we give Hanukkah guilt, or what they call Dmei Hanukkah? Why money? Why don't I give it in poem? It's the idea of the giving. So I will summarize that the power of, in, of pumping up the emunah is, is, is the month of giving. Whatever you can. And sometimes giving is not giving something, it's something is giving in. Saying, okay, I, I back off. You, you, you're right. Or I'm not going to go into this argument right now. Sometimes somebody steps on your leg and the reaction is, I'm going to show that person right now. I'm going to go now and slander him all over the city. And everybody will know that he's wrong and I'm right. Sometimes give in, back off. Sometimes you have to, you know, swallow your pride, swallow your anger, swallow your ego. So you do all that. That's why I said before that there's a, a remedy from Rabbi Chaim Palaji that he says if you, if you don't complain, complaining is, is, a lot of people asking me, what do you mean complain? Complaining that the gas bill is too high? What do you mean complaining? Complaining about this, complaining about that. Complaining is when I'm too picky about every little detail. Don't you have to be so picky about every little detail. Let things do, go uh, according to their nature. Let Hashem do His thing. You don't have to look at every little detail. And she said, and he did, and he said, and did that. So it's a, a month that you want to refine yourself. Self-refinement. That you really look at yourself and you're saying, I'm not going to be picky about every person that said something up against me. And I'm not going to be so picky about every little detail. And he did this and she did that. It's the month that when I really refine myself and I'm not, you know, being so particular about every little thing, that's when I'm able to let the emunah start uh, uh, coming out. And when I'm able to let the emunah rise, that's my vic victory over the Greek. And that's the power of the month and that's what we need to apply because a person who's a believer is successful in everything that they do. Because even when they fail, it's not a failure. It's just another step. There's no failure. The, and the victory, the most important is what I said before, is the real victory is that we all together win. When you win and somebody else suffers, that's not victory. That's just, just your ego being very happy right now that you are the best and the other person was worse. 
That's not real victory. The real victory is that we all together uh, are victorious. So Bezad Hashem, we have a lot more to do because uh, A, it's a month of opportunities, it's a window of opportunity. And there's also, we have a lot more to do because we see that the, the leash of the pressure is getting tighter and tighter on our neck. So there's a lot to do, not to just to say it in theory, to nod the head is very good, but you have to apply. And to say, how am I doing a, a change? How am I becoming a, a, a trend setter? How can I set, change something? And when you say to yourself, but I'm only one person, how can I do it? Again, this is the disbelief. If your Yetzirah is telling you, you are a nobody, who's going to listen to you? Why do you think you can make a change in the world? This is again the Greek in you telling you, you cannot do it. But the Emunah is saying, I can't do it. Yonah the prophet was able to make 12 million people do tshuva. It says Ninveh was 12, mil 12 million people. So if one person is able to make a whole city do tshuva, why can't I do it? Why can't I be making a change? I don't need to be a celebrity or somebody big, but I can do something. And again, it comes from Emunah. So when I make a change, then it will ripple out. Doesn't matter how big you are or you're known, you're not known. You make something, a positive action, this is the victory of, uh, of light over, over darkness. Because a little bit of light diminishes a lot of darkness. You make a change, trust me, it will affect, it will go outwards. And we need as much as possible lamplighters now in our dark era because we are facing, you know, uh, the, the coming of Mashiach can come either way. As it looks now, it's not coming so smooth. So we got to take a stand, we got to make a change, and we have the power of the month. Bezal Hashem, we should do the same way that up until now it was a month of miracles, then it should be also a month of miracles that we should overcome our physical enemies and any physical threat, and Am Israel should be safe wherever they are. Here in Israel there's a lot of attacks, a lot of problems. Outside the, the Israel there's also, the nation is not so safe, and we should, be, we should be fighting as a team, so we all can be safe as a nation, wherever we are. And all as one, as a team, be victorious over the darkness of the world. Hashem should have a beautiful, beautiful month.